Welcome back to another episode of I Never Liked You with Nick Smith and Mateo Lane. And today we're talking air travel. Now, it's appropriate that you dressed like a flight attendant from Pan Am. I wasn't Pam even thinking Am. about that. But you also, looked like a flight start... attendant from like 19, 1965 when flight and travel was still luxurious. I they wish made I was a flight attendant. Then? You would be a flight attendant so drunk with power, like you would be... You would be miserable. Can you do an example of like, okay, we're sitting in our seats and you have to Hold give the on. announcements? I cannot bend over this episode. You have to do it. What do I press? That one. And then that again? One. Okay. You're getting extra long episodes because Nick can't move in his corseted it's pretty. pussy blouse. If you were a flight attendant, okay, because you would be a good flight attendant in the sense that you're gay. Yes, but I'm too tall and I would snap my neck. Why, why would you snap your neck? Because I'm taller than the planes. I do. I have to walk like that <laughs> down the aisle every time. Um, how would you be as a flight attendant? Like, for example, um, you have to give the announcements. Start giving the announcements. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's your girl. <laughs> We're about to take off, and I just need to remind you all of the safety precautions. There are none. Because this is back when there wasn't any. Just have a good time. And if you need anything, holla. <laughs> okay. And then I come to you, presumably in first class. Yes. Um, Hi. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? Uh, uh, no, that you would say, here are our breakfast menu. Hello, sir. Here's our breakfast menu. Oh, great. What are, what are the uh, options? You can't read? Uh, no, this is a Delta flight. We're going to Austin. It's only four hours. They don't give you menus. I don't know why you don't know that. So usually... You they... just told me you would say... <laughs> what? <laughs> you set me up! <laughs> what are the breakfast options? I don't know. Granola? What do you want? You're a terrible <laughs> flight attendant. Why are you getting breakfast on the way to Austin? It's a, it's a four-hour flight. You want coffee or tea? Or I... me? You're disgusting. <laughs> Is there another flight attendant on this plane? Nope. <laughs> I listen to think air travel, I fly. You fly all the time. I fly every single week. I'm probably on two or three planes a week. And I've just become so accustomed to it that now I'm like, it's, it's like a blur. Like, I don't even think about it. I mean, I have. You, so the best, if you fly a lot, the, you have to, you don't have to, but you should get TSA pre-check and clear. I just you got through. TSA pre-check. Yes, you did. And you were we very used proud it for the first it. time together. And you'll be using it again this Thursday when we go to Pittsburgh. I will. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever this airs. But um, yeah. It I mean, is much easier and it was very easy to sign up and it makes me think, can't anybody do that and they isn't that unsafe? I think it's just like uh, when it's like an extra process I think people don't fly that often and so there's no point in going and scheduling and doing all this stuff. for them they're just like well I fly like two or three times a year but when you fly every single week like me Bob or Monet then it's it's more useful I mean right it's definitely there. a lot easier I can quicker. tell you my favorite and least favorite airports by now we I, didn't ask but sure but I no number one least favorite airport is Denver Airport it First of all, there's so much lore about that airport. You know that lore. The, yeah, there's like a mystery about the whole airport. You've never seen it. Yeah, it's like they have paintings of like an apocalypse happening. People in gas masks, and there's like a theory that because it's on the highest part of the country, that if the world floods, that's where all of our leaders the are going. The highest part of the country. Yeah, it's by the Rocky Mountains. Colorado is not in the Rocky Mountains. What are you talking about? Nick, why are you so dumb? We are trying. We, you, <laughs> Nick. Colorado's in the Midwest. It's next to Kansas, isn't it? On the left. Where do you think Aspen is? Colorado. And what no, do you they have mountains, but they're not the Rockies. Nick, well, I guess what mountains would they be then? The Appalachian Mountains are. What did you just say? The Appalachian Mountains. Where are they? First of all, where I come from, we pronounce it Appalachian. You're joking, right? That's how you pronounce it. The how Appala do you say it? The Appalachian Mountains? No, that way. <laughs> it's the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. That sounds fancy. I assure you, if I called every person in my town, which I could because Call it's right now. Call your mother. Get your phone out and call your mother right now. Diane. She's going to tell you you're an idiot. Guaranteed. The Appalachian? 
Appalachian. Is that a, like is that a dialect from Pennsylvania? No, it's the correct pronunciation. Your poor mother. Hello. Hey, you're on the podcast, so I don't have long. What mountain range do we live in? Endless mountains. No, the like over. What's the larger name for it? Appalachian. But it's Appalachian. It's pronounced Appalachian, right? What you just yeah. said? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank Bye. you. That's all. We got to go. Bye. Okay, calling my mom now. Your mom knows nothing. She's from Chicago. <laughs> we have no mountains in Chicago. You don't. We should call my grandma on one of these episodes. Hey, Mateo. Hi, Ma. Okay, you're on the podcast right now, so we don't have much time. Hi. The mountain range in Colorado is called what? No, that's the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains. And then what is the mountain range on the east coast of America called? The, um, um, um. Starts with an A. Appalachians. Thank you. Appalachians. All right. That's all? That's it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We need to ask Lizzo, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) What is she? Okay, let me see what it is. We're supposed to be talking about air travel. Okay, how how do I make it work? Okay, so, so we're both right. wrong. No, Appalachian. I don't know what that is. Appalachian. That's so just incorrect. maybe it's just our accents. Like it's just the dialects, no. Chicago dialect. Because how do you say this word? D- In the comment section, say who's right. How do you say this word? D O L L. Doll. Okay, so we say doll. My family says that. Yeah. Like my cousin's name is Molly. Yeah. M O L L Y, but we all say Molly. M O L L Y, Molly. Right, that's yeah. how we say it. But most people would say Molly. Yeah. Well, do you know that the Great Lakes all share similar a similar dialect where like the flat vowels with A's and O's? Great Lakes all share the same dialect. There's a similar there was a I watched a whole documentary on dialects in America. So like the southern dialect, the hey y'alls, was up Molly. Can you fish in those lakes? In the Great Lakes? Yes. What lake did you live by? Because isn't Pennsylvania touching one of the Great Lakes? Erie, but that's the other side. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're on the the east side. But they're not like protected lakes. You can like actually fish in them. Nick, they're huge. I understand, but they're like... Fishing isn't... What are you protecting a lake from by fishing? I don't know. In a lot of lakes, you have to like throw the fish back. Well, I think those are smaller lakes. These are gigantic lakes. They're like the size of a sea. I understand what the Great Lakes are. The name's in them. Great. (laughs) Anyways, this whole podcast should just be what doesn't Nick know. I'm not saying I know everything, but I just, I can't believe that you didn't know you could fish in the Great Lakes. Again, I just am asking, do you have to throw them back? There are a lot of lakes. People will know what I'm talking about that like you can't take home what you fish. Right. So I assumed because these are historic that they're historically lakes. protected lakes, even though yeah. they have gigantic shipment boats going through. Shipment boats? They have stuff going through, like to Chicago. Like, yes. That, yeah, but the, those shipment boats aren't fishing. They're no, delivering. That's worse for the Are environment. Are they delivering fish? No, they're not delivering <laughs> fish. But do you know that the Southern accent comes, like the, the Chicago accent, Midwest accent has more German influence in it. And the, the Southern, auf Deutsch. The, auf Deutsch, the Southeast accent, I believe is more of the British, comes from a, more British when it's more stretched out, talks more like this. I wonder like where a Southern the accent drawl. from where I'm from. The New York accent is a combination, but mostly Italian. See, a lot of people say where I'm from in Pennsylvania, we sound almost Chicago-like. Yeah, because the, the, they said that the Great Lakes, because of Maybe obviously... Maybe that's ch- why people think I'm dumb. <laughs> You're such a fucking idiot. My next feud's with the city of Chicago. Oh my God, there's six minutes left. We're supposed to be talking air travel. Okay, air travel. Um, the wor- oh, so I, Anyways, I, all that to say is the, the Denver, Denver airport is the worst. Haunted. And then the Boston airport. I hate What's the, the best Boston one? Air- the best one is LaGuardia, no question. LaGuardia is the now... The new LaGuardia. No, the old LaGuardia. Yes, the new LaGuardia. What do you mean? I feel like... Sometimes I feel like you're Rose and I'm Dorothy. Mm, sometimes, but I'm Dorothy a lot. Remember, she's like, can I borrow your earrings? I'm going on a date. With a man? Uh, no, a Venus flytrap. Um, I've been flying a lot more, specifically with you or my boyfriend, but in general... 
And I like flying. It's just the problem is with any form of transportation, I'm tall, so I don't really fit. So it's not comfortable. I mean, if I'm in first, I fit better. But even then, like when I'm walking down the aisle, I have to tilt my head or like, it's just, it's not, One my of the, ears also pop a ton. And I I miss the glamour of flying. You not were, that I was ever born. You were alive in the 1960s when people were getting I served lobster. It. Like I miss. What do you miss? It just seems so trashy. Like now. transactional? Yeah, it just seems trashy. And like. Are you flying spirit? No. God, I would never. Um, but it's like. Airline tickets just keep getting more and more expensive, they but do. the quality keeps getting worse and worse, yeah. which I guess is just a metaphor for America in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where I'm like, like we're spending all this money, like give us a little something. Like you can't give us something. Like, I don't know. One time I got into it, this is years ago, I was flying Delta and I fly so much that I know, and I was sitting next to Sashir and she was asleep for this, but another woman witnessed it. So the flight attendant comes by and she goes, you know, they say, do you want something to drink? I had a big bottle of water sitting on my thing. I said, no, I don't. I'll just have the Biscoff cookies, please. Cause they always give you like Biscoff Love. cookies. And she goes, that's not what I asked you. And I go, I like look around. I'm like, I, like next to my gigantic bottle of water. I go, I'm sorry. She goes, I didn't ask you what you wanted to well, eat. Well, she didn't. And I go, Okay, I was like, did I say something wrong? And then she goes, uh, then she, she said something else, like really rude, and walked away. And then the woman next to me, she's like, the hell was that about? I was like, I don't know. I just wanted a Biscoff cookie. And then well, I she like, wasn't asking if you wanted a cookie. I understand that, but I I'm was, on her side. Oh, God, but yeah, most of the time I'm very nice. Uh, I'm always very nice to flight attendants, and and you just, just I always ask for extra Biscoff cookies. I will say though. I constantly see on Twitter stuff where gays are like, oh, the flight attendant gave me a free blah, blah, blah. Never once has that been me. Now, granted, I normally look like a bridge troll when I'm flying, but no, never, never one like, oh. One time I was, a- I was flying to London and for some reason the flight was empty and it was a nightmare even me getting to that flight. That was just one of the worst experiences trying to get to the airport. However, I get on the plane, I'm by myself and I started watching Coco and I started sobbing. I was like... I could not contain myself. I was weeping as if someone died. And the flight attendant walked up to me. He was gay. He's like, I've noticed you got a bit of the sniffles. Do you want me to go get you something from the back? I was like, no, leave me alone. I cried once at The Good Dinosaur on a plane. It's a terrible movie. It's a Pixar movie. It's awful. Really, really bad. Lost it. Lost my mind. And then I do this other thing. And I know there's like a phenomenon. You like are watching your movie, but then I'm watching someone else's movie. That's not a phenomenon. No, it I've is. Literally, They're, never done that. No, it's called something that people like are. You're nosy. Like, yeah, it's called being nosy. <laughs> it's called being that's nosy. what that's called. It is probably called being nosy. But I fly all the time, and now I'm just so used. To, the, the worst flight What's ever. What's your was, worst habit when flying? Well, I have to pee all the time, all the time. So, so I'm you always have to asking, sit in an aisle seat. Like I don't. Sometimes I can't even wait till when we've taken off, and you have to wait for the flight attendant to get up, and then that means that you can get up. And sometimes I'm like, I have to fucking pee. Right That's what happened to now. us on our way to DC. I kept being like, "Can I go to the bathroom?" She's like, "No." I was yeah, like, but then I finally you go. begged her, and then I did see you like basically like hermit crab yourself that, into so the bathroom. So it's always aisle seat for you. I have to always, always aisle seat. I prefer an aisle seat as well. But if yeah. we're flying together, I don't get that luxury. No, you don't. But you pee more than me. The worst flight I took was to Australia. Actually, no, not That's to too Australia. Long. I would only go to Australia, New Zealand, Asia, all those long flights if I could fly first. Otherwise, I'm too big to sit in coach it, for that it long. It was the flight I, back. I can't do it. The flight, the flight there was fine. The flight back was rough. It was New Zealand Airlines from New Zealand direct to New York. I think it was 19 hours or 18 hours or something. And they have the seats. So like usually in first class, like you're facing forward. So you feel a little private. They had them tilted on the sides like this. Uh, so everyone's facing each other. So you didn't ever really feel private because there's just someone they didn't have staring barriers? at you no and so the whole time someone's staring at you and then the person next to me was snoring so i just kept like throwing things over and then blaming it on turbulence just to wake him up but i was like i watched like six movies i was like this is so that's too long, long. it's too I, long i know it was too long i will say something about airports and joe biden kamala Hillary, I, Hillary, Hillary, she's not even in AOC. Office. I mean, anyone at this point, I know you're all avidly watching this. You have to pass a law that things can only be upcharged so much because 
airports, it's a scam. Bottles of water are like $7. A bag of unfilled chips is like eight. It's They're probably too privatized. Much. And so the government can't it's do too anything. Much. Well, they need to get involved because it's too much. We have 30 seconds left. Is there any, so air, air travel, what grade do you give it? What? What grade do you give air travel? Like in I don't America? I don't know what kind of question that like, is. Like I would give it like a B plus. Okay, me too. That is the dumbest question I've Nick, ever heard. when was the Vietnam War? When was planes invented? I think 1905. You think or you know? What is it? <laughs> By the Wright brothers. We oh, oh no, it's the end. <laughs> it was pretty close. Thank you for watching and listening to another episode of our podcast. Please leave a review and please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time.